Hello, my name is Tamika Lowe with Forest Lake and Carolina School for Inquiry, and this is NASA Now. Hey, I'm Kristen, and this is NASA Now. There you are on the launch pad at T minus 10 and counting. How did you get there, and what are you thinking right at that moment? Well, today, we are going to hear how one astronaut went from the cockpit to the launch pad. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. NASA's Curiosity rover continues to make important discoveries. Just recently, Curiosity sent back images from the Martian surface that indicate evidence of a stream that once ran vigorously across the area in Gale Crater, where the rover is now traveling. Photos from Curiosity's mass cam show stones cemented into a layer of conglomerate rock. The size and shape of the stones offer clues to the speed and distance of the ancient stream's flow. The images show two areas, Hada and Link, both of which look like jackhammered pieces of concrete. But in fact, scientists believe these rock outcroppings are blocks of ancient stream bed. This discovery brings scientists ever closer to determining if Mars was once a habitable environment for life. To become an astronaut, you have to have the right stuff. Like our special guest, retired Air Force pilot, Colonel Gregory Johnson from the Johnson Space Flight Center. Colonel Johnson piloted two space shuttle missions, STS-123 and STS-134, to the International Space Station. He joined us earlier this year to share his first-hand accounts of the missions he flew, and also gave us the background on how he joined the ranks of the talented men and women who have orbited our planet. Everyone has a career prior to being an astronaut. I went through the fighter pilot program. I became a test pilot, flew all kinds of different airplanes, and then put my name in the hat to become an astronaut. There's a selection process. It's highly competitive. It's been a dream of mine since I was seven years old when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Once you become an astronaut, uh, you train for a couple of years, you specialize in your particular area. In my case, it was operating the space shuttle, uh, learning to land the space shuttle, uh, rendezvous uh, to different objects, including the space station, and operating the robotic arms, both on the space station and the space shuttle. And then eventually, uh, you get selected for a flight. As a pilot, I'm kind of in charge of the ship, if you will. My, my duties are like Scotty on Star Trek. The pilots are responsible for the main engines, the shuttle's main engines, and also the smaller engines, the orbital maneuvering system, the Ohm's engines, which adjust our orbits. We also have our reaction control system jets, which are the smaller jets that change the orientation of the space shuttle. The pilot's also responsible for the uh, APUs, the auxiliary power units, which give us uh, hydraulic power for many of the systems on board. The pilot's also uh, responsible for just the day-to-day -day operations of the space shuttle, the wet trash, the dry trash, keeping the filters clean, vacuuming, the uh, space toilet, working the galley, and those sorts of things. I remember the very first shuttle flight. We had four rookies on STS-123 back in 2008. When the main engines lit, there was a light in the cockpit. But when the solids lit, it was orange illumination all over, vibration, sound, light. It illuminated the uh, entire Florida coast. We had an overcast deck. We leaped off the ground like a wild animal and pierced through the clouds above us. It was like driving through a ball of fire. It was absolutely incredible. When you get to orbit, I think most astronauts will tell you it's, it's uh, an exciting adventure, but it's also a spiritual reflection. I spent a lot of time in the cupola. And you see our planet, you see how fragile the atmosphere looks. You see the, the, the beauty 
of all the different parts of our planet. The, the deserts are beautiful, uh, the, the reservoirs, the glaciers, the mountains. You see the Middle East, you don't see borders. You, you look down at our earth and you wonder why people have quarrels about seemingly insignificant things to you at the moment. And so uh, I think uh, most astronauts when they come back to the earth, they have a, maybe a, a, a broader perspective of what's really important in life. Do you have what it takes to pilot a spacecraft? Here's an exercise that is actually used to test astronauts. Teachers, you and your students can work on measuring and monitoring reaction speeds and retention in the speed of light. Look for the link on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.